Hello everybody, my name is Mark Leake and welcome to Veteran Talks. Today we have a special guest with us again. Well, I'd like to thank you, Tony Wright, for coming to see us again from Ford Assists. How are you doing, mate? You all right? Well, I'm uh, coping in these trying times. Oh, excellent, excellent. We, we've, we've got you talking about another subject that you guys do with the retreats that you do for veterans. Can you uh, explain a little bit more about that for us? Well, yeah, in, well, yeah the, retreat, the, the retreats are probably... I've got three really great projects that I think have fantastic outcomes. And, I, and I, a couple of years ago, I was talking to the staff and going, look, we need to stop doing all these little jobs that don't have brilliant outcomes. We need great outcomes. And one of those is Veterans Retreat. So about eight years ago, seven or eight, it'll be eight years this year, actually, uh, we we had a group of veterans and we just all wanted to get away for it from everything from the city uh, and go into the countryside and do some work on a project we were doing uh, uh, and just chill out, relax and cook together and eat together and just, you know, a lot of camaraderie and a lot of humor. Uh, and, and we did that. And, and it was, we're only there a couple of days. We went right into the, the wilds of Northumberland and we hired a little barn, which we stayed in. That was so basic. The only thing, the only amenity in there was a, an, an electric cooker. It did have lighting, but it didn't have bed. So everybody was in sleeping bags. Uh, and we did some work around how we were going to develop the community group we'd, we'd set up. Uh, and it was fantastic. And it was just one of those moments. And there was no alcohol allowed, which was the key bit, which everybody said, if you weren't with veterans, you won't be able to do that. But we did. And everybody went along to it. And everybody was able to concentrate because they didn't have the distractions we normally have in life. Luckily, none of the phones worked. Uh, it's quite close to Otterburn Ranges where we were, so there wasn't any bombing going on. And we had to pick going in lambing season to ensure that we weren't going to be woken up in the middle of the night by a load of squaddies stomping the way through there and helicopters and everything else. But we, it was quiet and it was lovely and it was relaxing. And uh, everyone who was in that group's actually gone on to do really well. And that was years ago. And then, so that idea stuck. And I, th I thought, well, what, what we need to do is probably see if we can do uh, more retreats, which are more focused on about health and well-being. So then we got the, we had a really, I won't mention him because he's, he's, a, he's a great guy. But it's obvious to work out who it is if you follow us on social media. But he, uh, he said, look, would you like to use my, I think it was then 22 bedroomed farmhouse in France uh, and take some veterans away and you can have it for free because I think what you're doing is great. And we've took him up every year since then. We go over to France, we, we fundraise to get the money to get over there and we go and stay in this, this beautiful millionaire's house uh, which has got a, a swimming pool, there's barbecues outside. Uh, you two are invited if we can get there in September this year, by the way. And it's extraordinary. And it's extraordinary on, on so many different levels. So on one level, it's, you would think, taking a group of veterans to somewhere where there's no alcohol uh, would be really boring. But it, it actually isn't because one of the wonderful things about France is is it lends itself to a very, I don't know, a very much more relaxed culture because you're in rural France. So we'd get up on the morning, we'd go out, we'd get the fresh bed from the bakery, we'd go to the markets, we'd buy the food we're going to cook for the meals, we'd come back, we'd start prepping all the food, we'd all be just chilling around talking and smoking too many cigars and drinking gallons of coffee and then we'd sit down and all have a lovely meal together, then we'd just chill out, work out what we're going to do for the rest of the week, which would be things like visiting uh, war memorials to lay wreaths to one of one of the places near us has got uh, to that to that venue has got there's only one British war grave so every year we go to lay a wreath uh, on his grave he was an RAF guy who lost his life uh, in about 1943 I think it was when he was doing an SOE uh, extraction I thought or, or, 
of putting somebody in. So, well, anyway, his, he, he died and we're going to lay a wreath and we're the only ones who do it. And he's actually in a section of the graveyard that's, that's full of uh, resistance, French resistance uh, people. So it's fa that's fascinating. So that's really nice. There's also, we're not a million miles when we're there from uh, the, the living war memorial for Orador Seglane, which was the village the, German, the SS went in and completely wiped out and burnt the ground and murdered all the children and the people. And that's a haunting little sobering place and we go and visit that and pay our respects there uh, and then we go to visit different villages and it's just wonderful so all the all the therapeutic magic happens on the evenings and because people aren't misusing drugs or alcohol everybody's a lot more open than what there would be we have our mental health therapist there so this year you guys are coming but we've also got a uh, uh, a, a currently serve an army photographer and he's going to be teaching people all about photography and then I hope to have an art exhibition of that work when we come back because there's so many beautiful places we can visit and try to capture what we do and I've also got another guy called Charlie Morley who teaches people uh, all about sleep and mindfulness and I did his course it was a six-week online course and it was so good. I, I've, I've actually commissioned them to come on this thing. We actually understand sleep patterns and how to get to sleep and what to do if you can't sleep and breathing exercises and uh, yoga nidra and everything. So Charlie's going to come with us and the whole group are going to learn and understand all about sleep, which is when you, when you think about it, you're going really back to basics, but it's fundamental. But when you put together uh, understanding and being able to sleep, uh, that's a key thing. Eating healthy, nutritious food, not using drugs and alcohol, being in the company of people who not only respect you, but want you there and want to spend time with you, doing enjoyable activities in an environment that's ridiculously safe. It's, it's pretty extraordinary, the differences. So the one thing you'll hear when you come on the tree is laughter. And it starts in the morning and doesn't finish until everyone goes to bed. And the weather's usually magnificent. Uh, and the, the, the benefit of being able to get away, and even, even well, I mean, we run it and organise it. So there's always a bit of us going, what if this happens? What do we do in this situation? Mm -hmm. So you're always on watch, if you like. But even for us, it's probably the best time of the year. And we weren't able to go last year. And everyone felt it. So everybody who normally goes, we've got a, a British couple there. We've got a fishing lake stocked with fish. And um, we've got one of, the, one of the guys, Ted, comes along and he's a fishing coach and he teaches anyone who wants to go and fish. So they just sit and fish all day in this beautiful, relaxing environment, get picked up, come back to our little, our little house thing, food's on the go. There's pizza ovens, bread ovens there. There's outside barbecues. So there's those huge risotto pans do you know what I mean Every, everything's communal but it's funny enough it's not all pull up a sandbag and let me tell you some lies it's actually people going well, opening up and talking about themselves and being that very accepting of each other and uh psychologically it, it's it's I, I think it's probably the nearest some of us ever get to go into a health farm we have a wood in our life just simply because we're, we're all there together and we're all doing really healthy mentally and physical things. Do you know what I mean? As a, as a, in a community group. And sometimes people go, well, I don't want to go fishing today. I don't want to go on that trip. I'd rather sit by the pool. Do what you want. Nobody cares. Who's coming to the cafe down in the village? We're just going to go and sit there and smoke French cigarettes and you know what I mean? And watch people and, and, and some do that, some don't do that. And, and then we come back and we all take terms washing up and cleaning up and the place is always immaculate. And the owner, after we go, it's cleaner than whenever we got there because everybody knows the routine and does the old litter pick and everything else. And it's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And what I want to do is build in more therapeutic aspects to it but a lot of the time it's just listening and and how many of us don't get the chance to talk uh unlike me uh don't get the chance to talk and be listened to for other people if you're socially isolated and you and you're on benefits you're never going to be able to afford to 
go and spend time in a in a beautiful house in a beautiful location. Never mind your transport costs, and it's all free. Sometimes if we don't do great on the funding, we ask people to put money towards the food and we'll buy food in when we're there. But other than that, it's just an exceptional experience. And we've made links now with another brilliant organisation. Not that I'm saying we're brilliant, we're good, but we could always get better. Uh, in America called Boulder Crest Retreat. Well, it's called Boulder Crest Institute now. And uh, they've got two fantastic veterans retreats. Uh, one in uh, Virginia, near the Blue Ridge Mountains, and the other one's in Arizona. And they've got a whole programme there. And what they do, which is and the bit I love is I, I, I really hate this medicalization of veterans issues at the minute, you know what I mean? And going, oh, it's mental health. It's mental health. You've got a mental health problem. Let's give you a label because I don't think it does you any good. I, I really, really don't. And when you've got authority people like doctors going, yes, you're this, you're that, it, it doesn't do you any good in the long run. Uh, and I think what we should be doing is a bit like what Boulder, Boulder Crest argue is that we should be teaching people how to struggle well. It's, they've got a book out called Struggle Well. Highly recommend it. You can get it on Amazon. It's brilliant. And it's basic. They've got a program and they run the program for a week. But then you get 18 months follow up. Uh, of, of group work with those people who are on the course, course with where you hit the targets that you set that you wanted to achieve during that week. So you basically got a, uh, uh, an 18, 19 month program, which for the people we've sent over and fundraised, uh, it's been life changing, absolutely life changing. So I want my retreats to get a bit more like that. But they're pretty cool at the minute by just giving people time out uh, with an opportunity to talk to people, mental health therapists, one-to-one, -one, group conversations, just laugh, learn about sleep, yoga, meditation, everything else. It's quite extraordinary stuff. It's extraordinary. And, uh, and when you think about it, we're not, we're not medicating anyone on this. Do you know what I mean? It's like there's too, too often people have got the doctor and he'll put you on really ridiculous, stupid levels of medication that don't, well, stop your feeling. On this trip, everybody's feeling, everybody connects. Uh, and, it, it, and it's pretty hippie-ish in a way, in one sense, if you think about it. But it's, it's, it, it's so simple in another, you know, sleep, food, uh, healthy living, good company, no, no, no trauma, no conflict. You know what I mean? I think the worst incident we ever had was one guy put onions in the other guy's dinner after he said he didn't want them. Well, if that's it, I can live with that. Do you know what I mean? And it, it, it's amazing. And even people who have a bit of a drink problem will work with them for a few months before to get them actually uh, detox before they'll go. And that's worked really well. We also include... I don't know if you'll be able to make it this year. He's not being well. But we usually get a top chef comes along as well. And so the food we have, he teaches them how to cook meals. Uh, he also teaches them how to do meals on a budget. But we'll, we'll have top quality food. You know what I mean? Healthy, nutritious food. Uh, and, you know, some, peop some people had never had, like, uh, risotto in the lives. Uh, some guys, one guy said, and we we, take, we we lose sight of people's lives. One guy said, Tony, that's the first time in 25 years I've had three meals a day. I, I can't believe how good I feel. It's the first time, it's the first week in 20 years I haven't had a drink of alcohol. It's the first time I have laughed nonstop for a week. And, it, and the guys who've got PTSD and are hypervigilant, by the end of the trip, we're having to shout at them on the last day to wake them up. So the guys who go, I only sleep three hours a night, end up sleeping four, five, six hours a night and not having nightmares. Now, we're doing some it right, but we need to do a bit more around that. And at that that's why I've got Charlie coming because he does stuff around. He did a Winston Churchill Memorial Trust Fellowship. And if you go on my website in the news section, you'll be able to watch what he did when he went to America, uh, looking at meditation and sleep uh, uh, as well. He's got a great little video out there. And uh, it, it, 
I think adding these extra bits in and you guys, go, I'm not asking you to sing for your supper. You know what I mean? It would be great just to have you there and watch. And then next year, you can, because we're in France, I ask people to cherry pick people in a sense. So you know people are there going to be able to cope, who are going to be able to manage, because getting somebody back from France, if they're having a really bad time, is a bit of a logistical nightmare, especially where we are, because the flights aren't that regular. Uh, but we 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 you know, that doesn't exclude people. It just means we've got to work a bit harder to get people who would really, really benefit uh, on the programme and look after them when they're there and afterwards. And unlike other programmes, a bit like you guys, we run, we run programmes 360, whatever it is a year. Uh, we're, we're there when we come back. So you're not falling off this cliff of being on a residential programme and then sat on your own in a, in your little flat going, what what was all that about? You know what I mean? I really miss all that. In fact, by the time we get back, most of the people who are on that programme are usually in work before me because we've <laughs> usually driven back uh, and they're, they're actually there next morning going, right, this is great totally re-energized and it's just an amazing thing and i've noticed i've seen a few more people starting to do it uh and i i thoroughly recommend it who's who's open to tony well we've got we've got vet, the last one i think last the year before, the year before we had a veteran who was aged he's 97 this year he's just he, he celebrated his 96 year old uh, 96th birthday so jack was a world war ii veteran yeah. uh he's also the oldest black belt judo uh whatever they call them in the country actually he's just got his 10th dan can you believe that <laughs> at 97 uh so it's all like intergenerational but it's, it's open to people that nine times well usually on our caseload or the, the slinks i'm making with you guys now you would bring your people do you know what i mean in future not on this one because i want you to get a, a feel of what goes on and then you would pick your people and go right so when they come if there's not that there will be issues but if there is they know you i think the real difficult thing is anyone going into a different group uh if you know someone, life's so much better if you go, oh, by the way, I, I, he really pissed me off when he said that. If you can say that to someone, it, it, it stops a lot of problems. Do you know what I mean? I think there's, yeah, I think there's a, a real need for, for to, well, to be able to feel safe. So if One, you have that connection with someone, then that can give you that sense, of, well, I'll be okay. Yeah, and, and, you know, and people, you know, everybody knows everybody really well. You know, we've got some really witty, really witty people uh, who come along who are uh, much sharper than I am. And you think to yourself, well, that can be intimidating for other people, isn't it? Sometimes you've got to go, ah, oh, comedy genius, but you know what I mean? He looks a bit upset. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like... You know, when the banter just goes a little bit further and you've got to regulate it a little bit. But it, it's about, and if you know that person, you're in a position to do it. So so we never open it up fully to, uh, well, it's, booked, it's fully booked now. And uh, with the women, I don't think we'll be able to do it, but then we're hoping to go in March. Uh, and uh, uh, they're, they're, I don't think they're going to get there this year. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, which is a bit of a pity. So they're going to have a gender specific retreat, but ours is still feasible for September if we all get jabbed. Yeah. 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 How, how not, many veterans do you take on these? Well, you've got, you've, they've changed some of the room configuration. So we try as best we can to give people their own rooms. Yeah. Uh, or if they're, if they're a couple, well, we've done that in the past, they can share. Uh, but you, anything more than 15 is logistically difficult unless people start making their own arrangements to get there. So how many bus takes 10? By the time you've got all the ba bags in, you, you know what I mean? You, you, you've got 10 in there, and that's, that's a lot of people on a minibus for 24 hours there, 24 hours back. Some people who are not as mobile fly in, you can get some really cheap flights and then we'll already be there and pick them up on the pick them up from the airport and then take them back so i think it all depends on how top heavy i am with with staff if you like do you know what i mean uh and you've got to get you've got to get people bought into agreement that they won't drink 
Uh, some people find that really, really difficult, even though they know they've been told you can't. Uh, so we have to make that really clear. We have to be pr pretty sure that nobody actually uh, ruins the system by doing that. Uh, because that, that, that everybody learns so much more when they're, uh, when they're uh, sober and not under the influence. Um, been talking about um, what's happening in France. What about doing something in the UK? Any plans for that, Tony? Well, we have, Rick. We've put a funding bid into the uh, Covenant Trust Fund, uh, and we're hoping to run uh, retreats in Scotland, England, but also uh, an online program helping people with sleep. So that 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 would take us. Well, that would take us to the end of this year. So the online one is the second best option, but the real actual physical manifestation of a retreat in uh, England and Scotland would be marvellous. And that, that's what I want to do is like get, pick, find a fabulous venue, put a great team of people together uh, and go and try and, I don't know, just try out different ways, you know what I mean, of, of engaging people, teaching people new skills that will help build emotional resilience uh, and help people cope with some of the difficulties we all face, but without the need for medication and without resorting to alcohol or drugs, which tends to be the classic uh, let's go and have a good time mentality, isn't it? The, the play hard, live hard, play hard sort of mentality. We need to get away from that. We need the people look after them. It's a pretty simple concept, but it works really well. The alcohol is kind of a distraction, isn't it, with the substance misuse? It's a distraction. You forget what you've just gone through and all you remember is the session you were on. Absolutely. And then you get, you know what I mean, in, in the past, not on that one, but we've had people when they go into that morose conversation, they disclose lots of things in front of lots of people, forgot they've said it, and then somebody pulls them the next day and they're mortified. Mm. So the, the no alcohol, no drugs is a really good policy. I think you know, it works really well about driving connection and, and sort of where I think alcohol and drugs fuel disconnection. Um, you know, and I think, you know, what we need to do is or having those neutral environments, which I think to a certain extent is what we create with these drop in centers. We create an environment where there's not a power imbalance that people can come in and they feel valued and they feel they can belong and they feel they can connect. And that's where change starts taking place. Immediately, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I think there's nothing better than creating spaces that are psychologically and physically safe. Uh, and that might seem a bit odd to people when you go, well, you're dealing with veterans. But, you know, I mean, we're dealing with human beings here uh, whose experiences of service delivery hasn't always been positive or helpful. Uh, so I think we're all doing great work in, in respect to that. Uh, and... Yeah, I'd probably wind up there and just say thank you for inviting me to speak. I, it, I really appreciate it. But there's lots of what I've talked about currently on the website. And I've just entered the world of blogging, can you believe? Good grief. Hope nobody's listening to me say that. Uh, and we do a weekly blog now. But I'd be, I'd be actually, I'm looking for people to come and do weekly blogs for us as well. No more than a few hundred words and just talk about some of the topics. I'll, I'll probably give you a shout, Mark or Rick, you know what I mean, to actually write about, I think, some of the some of the topics we talk about privately would be really, really interesting to people. I think we should stop just looking at the, oh, he needs a job, he needs this, he needs that. It's much more complex than that. Yeah, and I agree. And, and, and I think, you know, again, sort of bring the, the sort of collaborative into the... I think, you know, a lot of this is sort of how do we bring things? So, yeah, by all means, have it on your website, but let's also copy and paste it and have it under the collaborative umbrella as well, just the copy and paste. At 100%. And the same 100%. thing, you know, veteran talks, you know, we can yeah. bring that under the collaborative as well. So, yeah. you know, we can we can have these things, we can get different people on. Um, and we can talk and why, you know, if it ends up going ahead, why can't we do a sit down and talk veteran talks thing from France. 100%. You can do anything you want. Yeah. And, I, and I think, you know, to get people capturing how are they feeling, what's going on, apart from making everybody jealous. Uh, it, it's, a, it, it's a wonderful thing. 
And we get that, actually. We get people wandering around with cameras going, look at this. This is FaceTiming family members. <laughs> it's just, a, it's wonderful. It's lovely. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a great way to uh, connect with people and, uh, and, be, and facilitate change. Yeah. And it's interesting, everybody who comes back who's been on it, well, actually thrives. I can't think of anybody who's been and then hasn't went. That was just an amazing experience. And I think sometimes in life, just being able to press a reset button can make a major difference. Well, we all need that, don't we? We all need it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Oh. No worries. Um, Tony Wright from Ford Assist, thank you very much for giving us your time. And it's been an absolute pleasure to listen to your story. And thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Bring on the vaccines. All right, excellent. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. I'll see you now, right? I'll get away. 